Hello beautiful, do I have a video for you today? We are gonna be trying out new luxury beauty brand Prada Beauty that just launched at Sephora. We're just gonna be trying this out. Is this worth the money? Because I feel like I spent like $300 on this and I got four pieces. So, so we're gonna be trying out, seeing if this is worth the high price tag. And I can already tell you right now that the components, beautiful. If you did not know, I am a big lover of designer fashion. Prada is one of my absolute favorite brands. And with that, I don't say like, oh, I go out and buy a lot of stuff. It's more that I am in a tax bracket where I watch things from afar and I pick out one or two things per season from all the brands that I save up for and buy. One of the things that I own that I even have on today, I have the Prada earrings. I do actually have a couple of things from Prada, but like I can't put the shoes on my, it would be weird if I came on with like the little Prada bag. But Prada is one of my favorite brands. I just love how quirky they are, how almost like retro mixed with futuristic. And I think the components really show that. It is a mixed metal component. They also have the typical like, pistachio ice cream uh, color on the inside. This is a nice like paper feeling. And I also, I read about the, um, the, the product on the side and it's actually a really good information on this because they're giving you, there is an SPF in this one, but it's only an SPF 17, but they're literally telling you all about the SPF and how you have to apply it and how you have to reapply it to actually get the effect of an SPF. So I feel like this is a very informative uh, box actually. And this Prada Reveal Skin Optimizing Foundation, it says that it is unifies skin with an all day soft matte finish, which is something that I absolutely love. I want matte, but not powdery flat. And it is a seamless, flexible coverage, which tells me that you can build it up if you want to. It optimizes light diffusion with real life and on-screen technology with the IRL micro filter technology, and this is apparently trademarked, blurs the look of pores and fine lines. And it also improves the overall look of your skin over time. I'm excited to see what all of this is about. I got the shade, I got the shade, LW25, which is a light warm undertone in number 25. I'm fairly sure that they had like really light, light, medium, and tan. So I decided to go for a darker light, and I think that this will be a somewhat good shade on me, especially when we're moving into spring here, because I mean, spring in Texas, I'm in Texas, is literally summer where I'm from, Sweden. So this is what the component looks like. It has a little bit of a pump. This is also a refillable component. And this is a really beautiful component, and you can just pull it out and plug in the new one. And it's the same with the lipsticks. You can buy a lipstick component and then you can switch out with other lipsticks if you want to. So let's see, oh my God, let's see what we get. I mean, it's lighter than my hand, but that doesn't say much. I'm gonna use my Cinch F01. I do not have a primer on today because when I'm trying a foundation for the first time, I don't wanna use a primer that could change how the foundation um, works on the skin. It smells a little, almost like violets, but it's very true to luxury brands to have a scent. Definitely not overbearing. I can't smell it here. I have to like really go in to smell anything. That looks beautiful and I do think the color is gonna be nice. Let's zoom in so we can see something. So let's see if we can get a little bit on this side as well. I feel like it goes on very, it's a very light serum-like foundation, which is something that I really like. It reminds me a lot in consistency of that foundation, the Laura Mercier one, but I think this one has less coverage than the Laura Mercier one because the Laura Mercier definitely goes into full coverage. This is more of a medium that you apparently can build up. And I am, 40 and I have like oily combo skin. So when I hear soft matte, I'm like, yes. So I am hoping for some really nice longevity, especially since this was $70. I, I mean, for $70, I'm kind of hoping that it's gonna like do my laundry and file my taxes. But if it can only like last me for 12 hours, I will let the other things slide. Let's see how it covers up the little bit of breakout I have on my chin. 
because it is definitely that time of the month. I definitely feel like I want a little bit more coverage here, so I'm putting it on a sponge and just like stamping it in. And I'm just gonna go over and see if there's like an excess amount of product somewhere and the sponge can like soak it up. I mean, it does look like a really nice effortless medium coverage. It looks very even, it looks very light. It is the opposite of cakey. It just looks ethereal on the skin. It didn't cover everything of my breakouts, but still, this looks really nice. I'm actually gonna be trying something else today that's not Prada, but I bought a new concealer from Fenty as well. So while in Rome, speaking of our upcoming trip, I'm gonna be trying this one out. I got this one in, it's the Wear Even Concealer in 225N. I'm guess I normally go for a light medium and a warm or a neutral, and I'm guessing that that's what this is. That is pretty nice. I'm worried that this is gonna be too thick. And even when I put it on, you can almost see that it's like pretty thick, but we're gonna see how this is. I like using a little bit, or I have some discolorations and where I need, this is gonna be too light for my chin. So I'm actually gonna be doing on my uh, <laughs> FO2, I'm gonna do a little bit of foundation and I'm gonna blend that into the concealer so it doesn't end up being too light here because I want to try and get a little coverage on the breakouts. I think I managed. Okay, let's see how this is under my eyes. I'm having a little bit of dry under eyes as of late because of tretinoin. Not that I'm putting it under my eyes, but I mean, the skin is connected and I feel like it's really scaly under my eyes as of late. So maybe a creamy concealer is what I need. The only problem I usually have with like really creamy concealers, because again, I'm 40 and I have a lot of like, you can see loose skin here. It ends up creasing on me no matter what powder I use really, really easily. I still do the triangle shape from 2016. I never stopped doing that. It really works for my face shape to elongate my face. I just use way less product. I know we're doing bougie makeup today, but we're gonna go in with the NYX. <laughs> HD pressed powder and I'm gonna use a poof. I'm gonna use a poof and I'm gonna set this down with powder. Just press it down and hope that this doesn't crease. Foundation is looking divine. I just need my under eyes to look like that too. I'm just setting a little bit in my T-zone. That's where I get a little oily. I like to see how these foundations hold up in the rest of my face without setting my entire face the first time I use them. I think that that looks really good, right? Right now that looks really good. It looks like I have makeup, but it doesn't look cakey because this is a medium coverage. Like you can see some of the textured through. I feel like this close up also with all the wrinkles and the breakouts and everything should be the reminder that I do not use filters. If I did, I would be fixing all of this. <laughs> but what's the point in showing makeup if I'm not showing you how it actually looks? Mm -mm. I'm having some of the Alani. They sent me some energy drinks. Mm. These are actually really good. Like they are really tasty. Sent me as PR, like there's no sponsorship or anything, but I've really been enjoying them. I just put on a little bit of bronzer, the powder bronzer, and some blush, because I didn't want to disrupt anything. I will say, the concealer, I think you can see, it is starting to crease. It is just a little bit too creamy for my under eyes, but I'll blend it out again, and we'll see how it looks uh, towards the end. My dramatic dog is here as well. It is not time to go out. We're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. I know, I know. <clears throat> so about two of the lipsticks, I did not buy the lip balm. The lip balm came in just one like clear color. I wasn't super interested in that. It was literally expensive. I think these were like $50 or something. Let me double check. Yeah, the lipsticks were $50 each and the palette, 80. 
$80. So one has a gold and one has a silver. So I think this one is the monochrome soft matte. And then the other one is the monochrome hyper matte. I was trying to like read off the Sephora website and I got this in an orange and I thought we'll put this on and then we'll put the other one, which is like a cool toned brown. Reminds me a little bit of a Royal Scandal by Gucci. And we'll see how these are. A little bit of an awkward shape. This is definitely more of a sheer matte. I kind of want to use a lip liner. I'm just going to use the caramel lip liner. First impression. It has a very typical lipstick scent. You know, the old lipstick scent. Like, if you know, you know. This, like, sheer matte. It's pretty comfortable on, but it also accentuates a little bit the dry patches that I have on my lips, which I usually don't have, but now that I do have them, I can see that they're definitely not helping with that. But I think it is a really cute color. And with a lip liner, I really like it on. That is actually kind of cute. So we're gonna try the other one in a bit, but let's do our eye looks first. So I got the Quad, the Prada Dimension Quad, and I got it in, I think it's number three. This one is called Pulse, and it has three, they say mattes, but they do seem to be a little bit of a sheen within the mattes, if I'm not totally mistaken. And then there is one that is like, almost like a pewter, almost a silver. It does come with two applicators and I will not be using these applicators. I actually talked to someone, like these are like Barbie tools. This is not for me. And I see sometimes people ask like, why do they keep putting these tools in? This is not luxury. But I actually talked to a representative once for a luxury brand when I was living in Sweden. And she said that the customers of luxury brands complain if there are not tools in the compact. That's why like Dior and Prada and a bunch of these like luxury brands still put tools in their packaging. And it's because their main demographic, the customers they're actually trying to reach, which I don't think necessarily is like me, a, well now, 40 year old, crazy in color, loves a lot of makeup, beauty YouTuber, they want the tools. And so for them, it is seen as a luxury to have the tools in there. And I had never thought of this before she told me. And I was like, okay, well, then it makes sense. So now you know as well, when you see those tools in luxury makeup, you know that it's because their demographic actually want those tools. And I don't know if we will ever come to a place, maybe when, I guess, like my generation, the millennials, when we get into like our 60s, maybe we will be like, you know what, I'll just br I'll bring my own brush because there's no way that I'm not going to be using my brushes for this. It's just not happening. So I do own my own beauty brand and this is Cinch Beauty and these are the brushes that I'm going to be using. I'm going to go in with an EO6 and I am going to start with this like tomato red here and I'm going to try and do a me look. I like bold makeup. I like colorful makeup. And for me, it's about making stuff work for me. Let me see if I can actually put on a bit on the brush. And I'm just packing it on. I mean, it is a little weak in the pigment, but I also will say it doesn't pick up. I don't know if you can see, but it's almost like there's a little, it's a little creamy. Should I be feeling this? Yeah, it almost feels like half creamy which could explain why it's not super easy to pick up. That's also probably gonna make it very buildable because things that are a little creamy are usually very buildable and it is probably also gonna help with blendability. But maybe it won't be like as opaque as I would like it to be. But I mean, I still think that this is definitely doable. I am gonna blend the edge and I think I'm gonna put some under my eyes too. This is definitely not the type of eyeshadow that I usually go for, but I can definitely see the appeal of having a formula that's easy to work with. Okay, this is what I wanted to say. 
this is more buildable than I thought. So when I started to build it up and I was still just using this brush, I really was able to build this up to the level of pigmentation that I expect from a pigmented eyeshadow. It is just like I said, that almost like a half, like a, I don't want to say it, like a mixture between a cream and a powder. It shows up matte on the skin, but it's a bit blurring. It's very easy to like to build and very easy to blend. So I would say that this is a very sophisticated formula that I think a lot of people will get along with. Because like, look at this, I was definitely able ma to make this into a pretty pigmented one. So we are going to be building with, oh, here it is, like an EO, EO5, and I'm going to be using the shade that's up here. I remember when these were shown and people were like, only three colors? And I'm like, no, it's a fourth color. It's up here. And I'm going to be using that one. And I'm going to see if we can darken this up a bit. It's almost like a slightly less pigmented, but still buildable and slightly more powdery gel to powder, the ones that Natasha Denona has. It's like a little bit more powdery than that, a little less pigmented from the get-go, but you can still build them up the way that you can the Natasha Denona one. But they're, they're not a cream, if you understand what I mean, but like the, the feeling of them, like that looks great. That looks beyond great. That looks amazing. Like this could have been done with an indie eyeshadow palette. I'm actually very impressed. And I understand that like a lot of customers like wearing Pro can that can afford Prada is not gonna do this kind of a look. But the fact that I can make, oh, that looks good, that looks good. It makes me very excited and makes me feel feel like this could be another quad for me to travel with because also since it is a little bit more creamy these are probably not as easy to chatter which could be good when you're traveling but yeah that that's oh that's good ooh, ooh, ooh. i'm really loving how this is coming together and i'm picking up that pewter shade and i like spraying my shimmers because i feel like first of all it gives me the intensity that i personally want and also the main factor is that it helps with fallout so that it gets on ooh, gets on your lid and not on your cheeks i love using the eo one for stuff like this and now that it's already like a little bit damp i try to not rub too much in the pan because like i don't want to cause hard pan but I never really have a problem ever with hard pan in my eyeshadows when I pick up the product and then spray the brush and then put it on the eyes. Wow. That is more, in I don't know what I was expecting. Let me do a little bit more of the one with the red and just like buff it on the edge so that it disperses a little bit. Wait, why is this so good? If someone told me that like, oh yeah, this eye look is made with like a luxury brand, I would have been like, no, what else did you use? Like what else did you put in? Because like usually luxury brands do not produce stuff like this, but I'm impressed. Let me finish this up. Let me put on some mascara. And I think I'm gonna do something for the inner corners a little lighter before we switch out the lip color because I feel like this can be killer. Okay, I am obsessed with a dramatic white eyeliner and I know people said that this was popular last year and now it's out, but let me tell you, I have loved this for years. I did not start because it was popular and I am not stopping because it is not. I still think that this is such a good way of bringing even more drama to a look, if that is what you want. A cream colored liner or something that's your skin color will also work really great. I just love the drama of the white. And this one is my favorite white right now. It is the one from Tarte, Fake Awake. I think it is amazing. Let me clean off an EO one and let me put on, I have a really good, I can't really show you this one because it is something that the brand has not announced or released yet but let me put on a really nice look at that a peach matte 
in the inner corner. I love a mat in my inner corner. The older I get, the more I love a mat in the corner. It really hides all the wrinkles and crevices and makes it look smooth but still bright. So I think that that looks, I mean, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Ooh, oh my God, this paper is so... Let me take off this. Mm. And let's do the other one. I put a bit of cool BFF liner on. I love the contrast between Prada and Colourpop. Living for that. So let's try this one on. So this is supposed to be the ultra matte. So this is supposed to be even more matte and even more pigmented. It's definitely not tuggy, which I like. Sometimes a matte lipstick can be a little tuggy. I mean, the shape, it does take a little getting used to, but it's not impossible. I really like that color. If I do cool tone colors, I want it to be a cool tone brown. This look, I look hot. Oh my God, forget you saw that. <laughs> Erase that from your memory. I want to have one of those men in black. Look into the light. Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting from Prada. But I was thinking I was gonna say, oh, this is nice for being designer makeup. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, which is usually the case with most designer like makeup, but this eye look, it looks incredible. It's definitely a one of the most versatile formulas I've ever tried. And to the point where I'm like, do I need to check out the other $80 quads? Get a grip, girl, get a grip. It was your 40th birthday though. Do I deserve it? Ooh, again, get a grip, get a grip. This should be a cocktail. But I gotta say, this all looks really, really nice. Incredibly nice. With that being said, you can definitely get this look for less money. I mean, I could find dupes in my collection for less, but I also will say this is, like I said, probably the most versatile formula I've ever worked with when it comes to a matte eyeshadow. And the shimmers were, like the shimmer was really impactful. The lipstick, super matte, but still very comfortable on the lips. Foundation looks incredible. I'm gonna see how it wears throughout the day. If this foundation stays on and looks, I don't mind if it looks glowy because again, I have a combo oily skin, so everything is gonna look a little glowy on me in uh, my T-zone. I just don't want it to break up and I don't want it to look overly greasy oily. I can do, I can do glowy, I can do glowy. I don't want to be like greasy, did you dip your head in like a basket of fries? That's not the look I'm going for, but overall, gotta say, very impressed to the point that I kinda need to go and see what other color combos they had. Is this a bad idea? This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea, but I love Prada. I love Prada, so I really, really wanted to try out their makeup brand. I tried to buy it when it launched in the beginning, but everything sold out at their website real quickly, so I'm super excited that they're available in other retailers now. I would, of course, link everything down below. This was a very, very expensive purchase, and usually when I buy stuff for my YouTube, it's like a business expense, but the AdSense for this video is not gonna cover uh, the cost of this, and I'm totally fine with that, but if you did like this, if you did like me taking one for the team, I would highly appreciate a little like. A little like goes a long way, so I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you soon again in a new video. Bye!